Hey everybody, happy Wednesday evening. I'm gonna be waiting for my amazing, amazing friend Steve to jump on. Um, he's tagged in this and I obviously left his story in here too. Um, this is a Facebook Live that you should share. Uh, this is a Facebook Live that you should watch. Uh, hi Amy, because uh, Joey, because you guys need to hear this story. And again, I'm, I'm not alone in any of this. Uh, what's up, Joe? Um, love you too, brother. And Steve has, you know, we're in a mastermind together. And this guy is just an, inc he's just a beast. I'm going to add him in right now. Um, he, um, I, I always like other people telling, telling the story. So I'm, I'm, as soon as he comes on, uh, you guys really need to hear how amazing this man is and and the things that he he's been able yo dude Steve what's up what do you got it's it's on it's all mom did you watch did you watch WWF growing up <laughs> no I didn't <laughs> you didn't uh, you don't remember no, but I look I look like a 12 year old boy if without it no, I mean I like it. Uh, so so I loved Brett the hitman heart and you know they were it was the it was the um uh, Joe Alonzo will know, but you know, one of, one of the other characters, he had, he had a great goatee, just like you, you got rocket night right now. It's really good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, Jim, the Anvil Nightheart. That's who it is. So it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good look. Good look. That's awesome. Um, well, brother, I, I appreciate you so much. I know we did this on, on short notice and I'm looking forward to, uh, interviewing again tomorrow night, uh, sharing my story, but, but tonight is your night. This is about you. And uh, first of all, just grateful that uh, we're on this journey together this year in the mastermind and beyond. Yep. And, um, you know, you, you from from the minute that we we walked into the room, you were just real and raw from the get go. And we you know, and obviously in that little breakout group that we were in, you know, we learn about transparency and vulnerability and, and you know, mm -hmm. asking for help and asking for advice and, and def you've definitely had your ups and downs. So um, I wanted to do my best to introduce my audience to you because yours is a story that provides hope. Um, it provides inspiration, but it also lets people know it's okay to not be where you want to be, but things can change if you never give up and quit on yourself. Right. So um, first, Steve, I'm just going to turn it to you. So if you want to do a little short introduction of yourself, um, who you are, where you're from, what you do, and then we can get into the guts um, of the interview tonight. Sure, absolutely. Um, so welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Um, super great to finally get to do this with you. Um, so I'm Steve Valentine. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. I am a real estate professional here in Phoenix. I've had the uh, pleasure of failing multiple times, and the the failure brings <laughs> brings character. You know, there's a lot of people that tend to um, hide what they failed at rather than expose it and use it for the better to encourage, to inspire people. So um, I'll give you some, some, some snippets of my career, 20 years in the real estate business, um, married, two kids, uh, great family, come from a line of the family business. So in the early 2000s, when I got into the business, it was with my mom and dad. And um, for those of you not familiar with the Phoenix market, when it crashed in 2006, um, it caused a lot of turmoil. And back in that time, we were experimenting with a lot of things, whether it be the construction companies we owned, um, getting outside of our box, trying to create some additional streams of income inside real estate and really utilizing that to our benefit. And what ended up happening was is we kind of took our eye off the ball when it comes down to what we are really smart at, which is real estate. You know, that's what we really do best. And it, it caused us to lose momentum and it caused us to not see what the market was actually doing in Phoenix when it crashed. And so with that said, you know, the market went down, we had 75 employees and 25 fleet vehicles and we ended up losing everything. And I had to make the really hard choice early on, you know, having two toddlers at the time married our house in foreclosure and a million dollars worth of, cash
cash and assets that had already been inv invested in the business was now lost. And on top of it, we were stuck with personally guaranteed over a million dollars worth of, of debt when we walked mm. away. And it was, it was hard at that time to see your wife walk out to go wait tables mm. when you just come from all that we had. And now she's walking out the door at Christmas time to go wait tables so that we can try to figure out how to provide some sort of income to live on, even though we were still trying to figure out real estate and real estate got really tough at the time. It was, it was hard to make a living. The prices were dropping. People weren't buying. People couldn't sell. Um, it was a mess. And uh, so we really just hunkered down and seeing my wife walk out that day was kind of a driving force of, okay, I need to dig deep and I need to dig internally to make sure that we move forward and we figure it out. I mean, at the time, I think we were hiding our cars so that we could pay the car payments every other month and just trying to figure out the little things at the time. And what happened was, is, you know, there was more challenges to come. And, you know, they, they say that uh, God won't give you more than you can handle. And, you know, I felt like he really pushed us to the limits when we were there because a year after the business concaved um, in Thanksgiving of 2008, I was doing a mad mud run, which is like a tough mudder type thing. The last obstacle I dove in and um, broke my neck, crushed C5, C6. Jeez. And so now we're faced with that Thanksgiving week, uh, the surgeon came in and said, you know, the good news and the bad news is um, you have a 50-50 shot of not being paralyzed coming out of the surgery. And if we do this, there is that percentage that you could never walk again based on the evasiveness of what they had to do. And so, you know, Wendy and I just had a lot of faith at that time that, that it would turn out okay. And obviously you see that I'm sitting upright and, um, I have seven pins in my neck and uh, they fixed it. And six weeks later, by the grace of God, I was out walking around and doing my thing. She had to chauffeur me for a little while. Um, so that was, that was just another challenge that was added to it. But then it was also taking at the time, the failures that we had. Now keep this in mind. A lot of times our ego gets in the way of impacting or inspiring people. And at the time I was being interviewed for a magazine just before my, my broken neck experience. And I was nominated for this broker agent magazine of, you know, successful real estate agents in the Phoenix Valley. And I chose to use that article to um, go through my failures and what had happened because what we, what had already happened was it happened to us before it was popular to do and before people experienced it but I wanted people to see that there was life after. And even though we were super successful in what we did, we failed. And these are the lessons that we learned. And hopefully you can learn and we can help through our story to help you get through the things that you're facing. Yeah. And it was cool. We got some, some conversation and some different things. This is before all the Facebook messaging came out from different real estate agents that literally reached out in tears going, you know, you encourage and inspire me to keep moving, to not give up and to, to move forward with that. And so it was really awesome to take that. And that was one of those stepping stones for us where you put your ego aside and go, can I use this for, can I use my failure for good to impact somebody else? Even if it's just one person. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we were super blessed. We, uh, we ended up with getting into the bank owned business here in Phoenix which allowed us over a four year period of time to, you know, put our nose down and go to work. And in 2000, December, 2012, we actually paid off every bit of the million dollars worth of personally guaranteed debt that we had. And we awesome. never filed bankruptcy. We just went through doing the right thing. And um, it kind of gave us a start over. And then there was one more challenge that, that had to happen. And, you know, Back in 2006, my dad and I had a really rough departing as a family business, as all those things. My dad was my mentor, my hero, but it crushed me when all that happened. You know, anybody that's been in the family business understands the tensions and the things that happen. Mm. And it was really hard when, 
you know, we had separate companies. I was watching what my dad was doing. He was watching what I was doing. But then um, five years ago, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Mm. Um, and it was a nine month diagnosis from, uh, from the time it was diagnosed until he passed. And so that was a healing moment for my dad and I excited to go in and break down his company during that time while running mine and make sure that my mom was set up for success once it, it all transpired and happened when he passed. And it was, my dad's passing was actually one of the greatest learning experiences for me because there was things that I saw him doing that I never realized were possible. And it caused my mindset to change and be a little bit more creative on the real estate side. And that's really what took us to today, which I specialize in now is we really specialize in, you know, a lot of people refer to themselves when you ask them, you know, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, I'm a realtor. And then you typically put your fingers up and go, oh, I'll stay away, <laughs> right? Because you don't want their business card. You don't, want, you don't want their name and their database and all that stuff. And so I really look at myself now as a problem solver with a real estate license. Well so that? We, we and our, our logo says handcrafted real estate solutions. And the reason being is that in today's day and age, you know, the Amazon and the convenience of and the self-gratification of what we have is now starting to trickle into the real estate business. People want a simple way to sell their house. They want a simple way to move through it. And we like to guide them through all kinds of possible solutions. So for instance, if, if you need to sell and lease your house back and stay there a long period of time, we can provide that solution, which is completely different than what most people are doing. And it's just changed the outcome of what we do as a company. And our, our goal is to guide the consumer to the goal or the desire they're trying to accomplish in real estate. Dude, it's so funny. Um, we've lived such parallel lives um, in so many ways. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything right now until you hear my story tomorrow night, but you're going to be right. like, Wow. Because, you know, I can relate to so much of your story. And so, you know, and it's so funny because I'm very transparent. You know, I, I wrote a book on my story a few years back called Good Guys Always Win because, you know, sometimes bad things happen to good people and we always go through. And, and you know, a quote that I live by is your failures will always open the doors to your successes. And, and people may hear your story and say, you know, like, how could you keep going? And it's so funny because people ask me that question. They, they hear about things that you go through and, that, and they ask you, well, how did you keep going? And sometimes it's hard to answer that question in words because when you're in the moment, you're, you're not even thinking about quitting. You're, you're thinking about bobbing and weaving and mm -hmm. no matter what, take, taking some sort of step forward, whether it's an inch, a yard, or a mile, as long as you're, you're going forward, you're one step closer to getting out of where you are into what you want to be doing. So, so Steve, what do you think, you know, and I know you said that your father's passing was probably the greatest lesson um, that you learned, but what, what do you feel was most impactful to you? Because there's, there's so many moments that, that we can draw upon. And I was sharing, uh, I was sharing this with actually Rob Murgatroy earlier today. And, and we were talking about brain tattoos and Robin Sharma speaks about this, that, if I was to ask you, where were you on 9-11, you would probably be able to recall exactly where you were yep. when you heard about 9-11. Yep. We, we form these little brain tattoos. So, and, you know, I have a specific brain tattoo that's always going to be with me that I can recall like it was yesterday. Do you have a significant or specific moment or brain tattoo that you can go back to that really allows you to reflect upon how far you've come to where you are right now? Hmm. There's so many of those tattoos floating around. Okay, so <clears throat> I will, and it's funny because it's actually a brain tattoo that was turned into the tattoo that's on my forearm that says limitless. Mm. And here's, here's what I believe that was the most impactful for my dad that really left the impression. I think that we live in life, we live in our businesses, and we live with limitations and our limitations come from the lack of surrounding ourselves 
with great people. Mm. And what happened with my dad was he was limited in his beliefs that he could do more than what he was doing based on the time and space he was at. And what I mean by that is that he was working for a lot of investors and doing a great job for them. But there was one particular investor that was dragging him around like a puppy dog on a leash. And what I saw there was that person created limitations for him to take the genius that was inside of him and utilize it for bigger things. And so when I Mm. looked at that and I started thinking about, you know, all the things we've been through, the things that I saw my dad go through, I'm not going to live with limitations. I'm going to have a limitless mindset, which really, it, it went over into real estate, which I can take a house. I was telling somebody this the other day. I said, when you're at a pizza place and the balloon animal guy comes up and he says, hey, what kind of balloon animal do you want me to make you? That's what I do with real estate. You tell me what balloon animal you want and I'll make it. Mm. Because there's so many different creative (laughs) processes to do with it. It makes the options limitless depending on where you're at in time and space. You see a lot of people with real estate, there's only one way to do it and that's to buy or sell a house and they don't see all the other options that there are to either create income create long-term wealth and i want to show people how to build wealth inside real estate through ways that they never thought of because most people 95 percent of my industry in fact i was teaching a class today 26 people in the room when you ask 26 people in the real estate industry do you own investment property and one person raises their hand that is typical inside the business. So when I look at that, Mm. I go, okay, so if I call one of those agents, they're going to sell me a house or an investment property that they don't do themselves. And so now, you know, I'm kind of on a mission, not only helping our own clients, but speaking to real estate agents all over the country on how to overcome the limitations that they don't have money. They don't know how to do it and how to have an impact on their clients by providing multiple solutions and what they do. I love that. So, I mean, there's a lot of uh, entrepreneurs in my network and, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's real estate or, or business coaching, whatever it is, you know, we're all entrepreneurs. And you and I both know that, that one of the, the greatest assets, but also liabilities that an entrepreneur can have is their mindset because, mm-hmm. You know, it's very easy. You know, we spend a lot of time sometimes by ourselves and at our desks and, you know, we're not interact. So we have a lot of time to think, ponder and stay in that space in between our ears. And, you know, in in business coaching or network marketing or whatever the business is, you know, people are going to be faced with challenges. So uh, in, in everything that you've experienced and everything that you've come out of, what advice could you give uh, the beginning entrepreneur or the seasoned entrepreneur that is still battling that negative mindset or the 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 thoughts of limited beliefs. What what what's a, a very simple mindset tip that that you use for yourself that people can start utilizing themselves? Well, I think the mindset. So think about the entrepreneur. You know, we get into entrepreneurship because we want to own our own business, and what that does is it places us on an island, and we feel you know, we feel like being on that island, we're alone and we're afraid to talk to other entrepreneurs or even collaborate with other people in our own space for fear of, you know, it's that abundance and scarcity mindset. Yeah. You know, years ago, when you look at the real estate business and what's happened over the last 20 years, 20 years ago, you wouldn't be caught dead having lunch with another real estate agent talking about how to do business better because you'd be afraid of sharing that secret. Mm. And now I collaborate with some of the most brilliant minds in the business because I do things so much differently than a traditional real estate agent or team does. And I love to share it. You know why? Because I don't want to see them do or make some of the same mistakes that I saw my dad make. And so when you talk about the entrepreneur, I think it's making sure that they surround themselves with really great people that are going to pull them up, that are going to share with them and that they are also willing to share and not have that, uh, that scarcity mindset of somebody's going to use this against me. 
It's so funny you said that. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, I was just talking about this earlier today. Um, the importance of of the mindset. Um, there's a great book um, called uh, uh, The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. I'm trying to find it today because I, I, I literally wanted to show people. But if anyone really wants to learn the whole ins and outs of exactly how it's done, I think it's right here. Yes, here it is. Perfect. So it's The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles. This book was written in 1910. So this book led to think and grow rich all all mm -hmm. of the all of the money mindset books are based off of this and right. it talks about instead of living in competition and in comparison live in creation in collaboration mm -hmm. because that's when amazing things end up happening so let me ask you this because i have a couple questions that i want to get into at the end but yep. um I, you know my fiance is into real estate i love real estate so if someone was to ask Steve, um, what makes your, your thought process about real estate or the way that you run your business differently? What, what is that one thing that you would say separates you from everyone else? Here's the best way I can put it. If you were going to go to Africa and hire a safari guide, you would look for somebody that can get you from point A to point B, guiding you through all the different things that they know about that jungle through experience. Mm. One thing about the real estate business, okay, I've failed, I've failed to the nth degree. I've lost a home to foreclosure. I've you know, invested in real estate because that's what I do now. And I also help investors invest their money into greater rates of return. And also... You go back to the consumer themselves. It's not about the sale. I'm very passionate about what I do, but I'm also very passionate about guiding people to what their goals are, not to what my commission is mm. and, and not what I'm going to get paid. And there's a Love difference that. when you step back and you go, okay, I may talk this person into keeping their house as a rental property, which ultimately talks me out of getting paid, but it ultimately talks them into a future wealth and building of that. And that's what I do. And that's how we operate. And I love that conversation with people. And so what that does is it spills over when, when I take a first time home buyer out, rather than them focusing on their first home and, and how cute it is and all those things, I'm trying to guide them to their future thought process of, Hey, Let's really look at houses from a non-emotional standpoint. You can be emotional while you're there, but I want to guide you 20 years from now into what it would look like if this house was paid off by somebody that lives here that you rented it to because mm. we had this conversation 20 years ago. Wow. I, and that's, I mean, but even, even more so Steve, it's the trust that that person has in you because when you build that rapport and that relationship with someone and something comes up about real estate or this, that, or the other, guess whose mouth, who guess whose name is going to come out of that person's mouth, right? Your name, because it's, it's all about, uh, the money is the side effect. Chris talks about this all the time. You yep. give, 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 and the money that you get back ends up just being the side effect. Right. Right. And it's also taking into account. So it's not just working with clients but it's also collaborating with the industry. I have real estate agents all the time calling me and asking me, how do I solve for this? You, you're kind of the creative genius and I'm starting to be known for that. Like, hey, how do I take this from point A to point B? Cause I'm not sure where to get the money. I'm not sure how to do the repairs. I'm not sure what I'm up against and is this the right thing? So the cool thing is, is knowing that the agents can call me or text me and say, hey, I've got this issue. What can I do with it? And then my crazy brain goes to work to help them solve for that problem. And, you know, I have a lot of real estate agents that call me and I go meet with them and their seller. Hey, this is what they're up against. How do we solve for it? So I've created a, a brand where even the real estate agents aren't 
worried about me coming in trying to take a client. They understand that we're going to work together because the client's end goal is the ultimate reward for everybody at the end of the day. Wow. Love that. And, and that, that, that's, that's a true leader right there. You know, not thinking about the money. Cause again, the money is the side effect. It's the impact you have, not only the, the other agent that you're working with, but again, the person who's most important in that equation, which is the buyer, the seller, making them understand that they're in good hands. And I just absolutely love how, how just tactful you are with that and how professional you are with it as well, because you know, there's a lot of people that do things for various reasons. And when you do things with the heart set that you're doing it without expecting anything back in return, it, everything in, in life just feels better. All right. So I have a couple rapid fire questions before we end tonight's interview. Um, to date, what is your greatest personal accomplishment? Uh, You know, it's, geez, there's, there's a lot of them, but obviously, you know, my wife and kids, what we do and how we do it, you know, one of the things we didn't really talk about is my wife and I have worked together for 20 years. Mm. You know, she's, she's now our general contractor for our business and awesome. she runs our construction side and we've, you know, raised our kids and had a lot of fun and still work together and made it this far. I love that. <laughs> and and you're still standing. And right, you're still, still standing. standing. Um, what is your greatest professional um, accomplishment? Learning how to provide solutions based on creativity rather than providing solutions based on income. So I, like I said before, you know what, I'm a problem solver with a real estate license, not a realtor looking to sell you something, you know, I'm very passionate in what I can provide and what we can do as a group. And there's a lot of things out there that a lot of people just don't know. There's, you know, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not bashing the real estate industry, but the stuff that I'm doing is not taught and it's not shown. So people don't know what they don't know. It's I mean that. I mean, um, anyone that's on here that that has the real estate license, they're an agent, they're an investor, um, and you know, Steve is is an is an open door. You can reach out to him. I tagged him in this. You should absolutely reach out to him with any questions. He's a he's a leader not only in his industry but um, in life, and you know, he's the expert, not me. Um, a couple final questions. Um, number one. What is your greatest professional um, obstacle that you've had to overcome? Myself. So I'll, 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 I'll just follow that up with what's also your greatest pro, pro, uh, professional or personal uh, obstacle you had to overcome? Well, I think it's anytime you do this, it's, it's overcoming yourself and the fear of judgment and, you know, the fear of the hater and those types of things and making sure that, you know, it's really hard to overcome is when you feel that you're doing the right thing and yet somebody crushes you on the fact that you're doing the wrong thing. And even mm -hmm. though your intention was from the heart, sometimes that's really hard to get over just because it does crush you because I'm doing things intentionally from the heart not from the business side. So those are probably the greatest struggles when it comes down to it, because no matter what, you know, your industry, my industry, especially my industry, they're extremely, uh, you know, loud and proud when it comes down to some of this stuff. They, um, they, they like to hate on people that are doing things different and they like to call people out. Yeah. So it's always the tough part of the industry. You know, it, I, I had like, uh, and I shared this on Facebook that I had like this really negative review written about my book. And it was someone that, that just doesn't like me. A, it was a personal attack. They never read the book and they, they wrote a lot of harmful things. And, and uh, you know that you're making a really big impact when the haters start to show up. And, sure. and, 
and and it's and it comes with the territory you have to you know love the people that that are loving what you're doing and they're supporting you but you also have to embrace the haters because they're they're gonna the 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 bigger you get the more impact you have the more people that you reach and touch the more people are not going to be in agreement with what you're doing and you just have to be prepared for that and that's just uh that's an amazing amazing mindset to have so um, Steve, final question. I, I don't want to take up too much of your evening, and this was just incredible. Final question. No wrong answer, but I love asking this. Um, what does success mean to you? Uh, you know what? Success is at the end of the day going home and knowing that you did the right thing because it was right and not because it had to do with money. And knowing that you have the ability to give back and you have the ability to contribute to people's lives day in, day out, whether it be your employees, whether it be your partners, whether it be your clients. And that success comes with contribution, not necessarily income. You know, we know a lot of people that are super successful income wise, but their contribution is very little. And I know at the end of the day, you know, there's people that I help today. There's people that I poured into in the class that I taught today. You know, there's people on this interview that, that might, you know, get an aha moment out of it. Um, You know, because when we do stuff like this, look, we can listen to big podcasts, the Ed Milets, the Andy Frisellas and all these other things, but this is two real people that have been through some things and going through that process. And if you can impact somebody on that level, Mm -hmm that's what makes a difference at the end of the day. 100%, you know, and, and that's not to take away anybody else's story uh, because everyone, you know, they see the glory, but they don't know the story behind that. And, and there's a lot of people that really feel like they're alone in their journey in life. You know, I'm the only one that's been through this financial struggle. Or I'm, I'm the only one struggling right now. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm the only one that's ever been divorced, whatever it is. Right. No one is ever alone. And that's why I love doing um, interviews like this because, you know, everyone sees whatever they want to see on social media. But that's why I love having conversations with people. Because again, we live in a digital and automated world. um, But the one aspect that can never be automated is human connection and talking back and forth like this, because this is real life. This is what it's all about. And anyone that knows you, anyone that knows me, um, you know, when you speak from the heart that can be felt through people just watching a video and, uh, and brother, you did an incredible job of doing that. And I just, you know, just want to honor you and just say how grateful I am for you and, uh, you know, the friendship that we're forming in this mastermind and even outside Absolutely. of it. And, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to be here tonight. No, I appreciate that, Scott. But Hey, I want to touch on one more thing that you said there that was really important. You know, I spoke to 500 people in Florida on, um, Thursday last week or Wednesday. And one of the things that I had on one of my slides is, the depth of your relationships will determine the success in your business Mm. because we live in a world where we want to automate and we want to call people. I don't want to call my friend Scott a lead. You know, we, we talk about lead generation. Well, how about we talk about relationship building? Yeah. How can I build more relationships to be more successful in my business? Because ultimately the relationship is going to be the thing that pays off over time not how much you nag the lead through automation. 100%. I, I, I couldn't agree more because, again, you can automate everything that you want. You can automate your funnels, this, that, or the other. But the one thing that is never, ever going to be automated and can't be is human connection. Correct. And as long as people know how to still create conversations and relationship with people, Steve, you and I both know the people that are the most successful – that leave the most impact that give the most back are the ones that talk to the most people and create the most lasting relationships. And, and, uh, you are a clear example of someone that's doing that. So, um, you know, continued success to you, brother. And I'm, I'm looking forward to running this back tomorrow night on, uh, on your Facebook. So we can, yeah, we tomorrow, can share tomorrow a night. We more. get to uh, switch chairs. You get yeah. the hot seat tomorrow night, little role reversal. So I'm going to be sitting back and I'm going to be in the hot seat. So, um, I'm looking forward to it. And, and Steve, guys, hey, know. real quick on that, Scott, is that yeah. guys don't miss tomorrow's interview with Scott because this guy is super genius. <laughs> and I actually asked him to do this. I don't know if we're going to be able to, but um, he's a super genius when it comes down to using LinkedIn to connect with people. 
And I actually asked him if he would look at my LinkedIn and tear it apart because I don't think I've been on it in years, but I probably should. And he's learned how to build relationships and connections through LinkedIn, um, very specialized niche. And uh, so definitely tune in tomorrow night for, uh, for some awesome information on that. So I'm super Steve, excited to do that. And Steve, I will definitely be taking a look at your profile and I will, uh, I, 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 will, I will give you some tips and you will be hearing from me. So that's not a problem. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, buddy, right, brother. Great talking to you tonight. You too, my brother. I will see you tomorrow night. And again, thanks so much for being here and just grateful for you, my man. Sounds like a plan. Have a good night. I'll buddy. talk to you soon, Steve. Thank you. So guys, as you can see, you know, success truly does mean something for different people. And, and Steve is just, I mean, such an incredible, incredible human being. Anybody that's on here um, that is a real estate agent, real estate investor, um, I'm in a mastermind with that amazing human being. And when, when I mean this guy knows his stuff, he, he knows things that people do not know and will ever know because he's created them. So follow Steve on Facebook, send him a message, let him know how impactful this was, share some takeaways with him, tag him on Facebook, whatever it is. And I just wanted to say uh, hi to Kathleen and everybody else that's been on here. Uh, much love and gratitude to each and every one of you for tuning in. And again, I'm going to be doing this again tomorrow night, but the role will be reversed. Steve will be interviewing me. So tune into my Facebook where I'll be interviewed by Steve, share a little of my story and some tips. Guys, enjoy the rest of your night. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.